Welcome everyone to beautiful Alpha Omega Winery here in the Rutherford Appalachian of Napa Valley. I'm your virtual ambassador, Barrett Spiegel, and I'm joined here on our lawn by an amazing crew to dive into our November Wine Club allocation, our final wine club release for this year. We have our Right Bank 2019 blend here, and then our single AVA Cabernet Sauvignon from our home appellation, the Rutherford Cabernet Sauvignon 2019 and it's going to be a blast. Joining me here on our lawn, I've got winemaker Matt Brain. Great to be here. Great to have you back. Can't wait to check out these wines. They're, they're smelling delicious they right are. now. They are. Also joining me as always, our master sommelier, Bob Bath. Thanks, Barrett. Wonderful to be here also. Great to have you, Bob. Yeah. This is a video that we're gonna put together to really allow our wine club members and our loyal following to dive into these two wines that you're getting in your November allocation. And what better way to enjoy great wine, Bob, than to pair it with an incredible food pairing? And this is the season to where it's time to eat and drink and drink and eat. You know what I mean? And we've got a special guest chef here, Alpha Omega favorite, barbecue master, Chef Jesse <laughs> McQuarrie here today, Bob. Hey, guys. Hey, I'm really excited about this. This is the time of year when you, you start to have those special occasions. It's the holiday season. You're baking out special wines. We've got some special food also today to put those special wines. Mm -hmm. Let's check in with him. Let's check in and see what we got yeah. going on. Uh, when this pairing was announced, uh, Matt, Brain, and I sort of geeked out a little bit because uh, this is one of my personal favorite dishes. Me too. I would think if, if I had a last meal, it would be hard for me not to choose this, <laughs> to be honest. I love it. It's difficult. Uh, it's complex. And you don't see it often. And uh, I can't wait to see it today. All right, Bob and Chef Jesse, what do we got going on here? Well, Chef Jesse McQuarrie, first of all, um, Mission Kitchen and Bar in Sonoma, right? That's right. Wonderful place, as a matter of fact. Uh, tell us a little bit about Mission Kitchen and Bar. Well, it's a, it's a neighborhood bar. Uh, that's what we like to refer to it as. It's pretty much a dive bar, but we have great food, and, uh, and we really embrace the community. We've been open for about three years, and uh, it's a great place to come and watch sports, sporting events, uh, live music. So it's fun. Nice place when you're up here in the in the wine yeah, country, as a matter of fact. it's relaxed wine country vibe. Oh, I love it. And I know food. you have a long association with Alpha Omega, uh, and really from the barbecue standpoint. But we're we're going to take a little bit of a twist today. We're not doing barbecue. No, we're not. In fact, we're we're doing something that most people probably have heard of, which is beef Wellington. But we've got lamb Wellington. Lamb so Wellington. Why, why lamb Wellington? Well, I love the earthy tones that lamb that brings. I love the way it pairs with these wines that we're going to try today, and. Um, Another reason is I, I, I love braising during the winter time, um, slow cooking. Yeah. You know, look, put it put it in the oven and let it do its work. Um, and so I thought it'd be nice to, instead of doing a traditional filet mignon uh, beef Wellington, I thought it'd be nice to do lamb and then take it a step further by using uh, braised lamb shank and then literally pulling it off the bone once it's finished cooking, and then assembling a classic beef wellington but they're actually individual pouches as opposed to a long like log shaped beef wellington well i love this for they're the holiday for season yeah, yeah exactly particularly when you have meals whether it's thanksgiving or it's christmas and you want to do individual wellingtons yeah and the other advantage too is that you don't have to worry about cooking that filet enough so this way you're already got to cook so i think it takes all that pressure that off, is a great it? point and that's another reason why i developed this dish the way it is is because the the protein the lamb in this case is actually already cooked you're just basically assembling the Wellington individually, which is really nice for your guests. You can put it out on a nice buffet or serve it family style, it's, and they look very cute. Um, uh, you don't have to worry about the temperature. You just warm it all the way through. And to that end, I would say, um, always have a good thermometer uh, at your disposal in your kitchen, and temp, temp it out to about 155 degrees, and it'll continue to heat about another 10 or 15 degrees. So that's kind of a trick on that. Yeah. So, of course, this recipe is on the Alpha Omega Winery website. And when you look at the recipe, it's, it's not a short recipe. It's pretty developed. What can I do ahead of time? In other words, I've got everybody coming for that day. Are there some of these parts of this that I can do ahead of time? That's a great question. Um, I would recommend uh, starting with the, uh, the uh, persimmon chutney. Um, you can use other fruits if, you're not, uh, if you can't find persimmons or don't care for them. I would recommend pears or a wonderful uh, winter fruit that you can usually find at a specialty grocery store, uh, quince, uh, something along those lines, or apples. 
Um, and the same exact recipe will work for any of those fruits. Um, uh, I would start with the chutney and make that. You can make it up to five days ahead. Uh, oh, it will last for several weeks in the refrigerator. And then I would, uh, I would braise my lamb uh, maybe two days before so that you have time, has time to cool, then you have time to pull the meat off the bone and chop it, which you'll see in the recipe. Um, and then the day before, uh, and, and, and two days before I would also do the mushroom duck cell because that takes a few hours to do. Um, and then the day before I would do my garlic spinach and you could actually assemble the uh, Wellingtons the day before and you'll be in good shape for the next day when you're, before your guests arrive, all you're basically doing is brushing it with egg oh, wash fantastic. and baking it. I'm so glad you can do some of that ahead of yeah, time. Yeah, you can do it all ahead. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Now, persimmons real quick. I love the seasonality of the persimmons. These are Fuyu persimmons though, right? Special? These are Fuyu persimmons um, as opposed to Hychia persimmons. The, the main way you can tell the difference uh, is flavor, but the shape of the persimmon, the Hychias are um, oblong and they have a pointy right. end. Yeah. Um, and the, the uh, Fuyus, oh, they're, think flatter, they're flatter. flatter. Yeah. They're a flatter yeah. persimmon. So um, that's the easy way to tell. Uh, the uh, Hychias are loaded with tannins and they're better to, uh, to cook slowly. Uh, most of the time they're in uh, baked goods, muffins and bread, quick yeah. breads, things like yeah. that. Great, fantastic. I know you mentioned mushrooms also. I know they're a key part of the, the filling for this. Right. Uh, what types of mushrooms? Should I go exotic, should I go basic, or can I do both? Whatever you can find is, is what I tell people. You can do classic uh, white button mushrooms. Um, those are generally used in a classic duck cell. Um, or you can use cremini mushrooms, which are baby portobellas. Those two are the most easily uh, found. Um, but if you have, if you can find and source uh, some good wild mushrooms or exotic mushrooms in your local area, wherever you happen to live, uh, by all means, try it. It's just, it'll just develop a different, you know, more of that earthy uh, flavor profile. Fantastic. And then one other thing too, I know that you mentioned that you can cook those uh, lamb shanks ahead of time. How much lamb shank should I use uh, per person? And then what about saving some of that braising liquid afterwards? Good question. I would. I would generally go with a, a pound to a pound and a half of, of raw weight with the uh, lamb shanks. They vary in size depending on your butcher. Um, they usually run about two, two and a half pounds each. Um, sometimes they get as low as a pound and a half, but I would say a pound and a half uh, per person weight because the finished weight will reduce down to about 30% finished yeah. product. Yeah, you're definitely losing some. Right. Yeah. So okay, about a good. pound and a half per person, I would say. And then I save that braising liquid after I... Yeah, you'll see in the recipe the method on how to do a classic uh, braise, uh, which can also translate into like a braised short rib if you wanted to do the same thing, it works. Okay. Um, and yes, you definitely save the braising liquid. Uh, you strain it, strain off all the vegetables and the other matter that, that, that are a part of the sauce, and then reduce that liquid by about 50% until it coats the back of a spoon. Um, and then you're good to go. You have your finished sauce. Great. I'm going to wind up. That sounds fabulous. Yeah. And I know there's a little secret ingredient, right? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, what the chefs do in restaurants, and one reason why the sauces pop quite often, is they'll finish them with some butter. So uh, take your warm uh, sauce and literally stir in the butter gently, and it'll, it'll, it'll incorporate into the sauce. And then finish it with some lemon juice, some red wine vinegar or sherry vinegar, just a little bit of acid, a couple teaspoons. Stir it in. Uh, maybe some fresh cracked pepper, and that will make the sauce pop. Yeah, and that little bit of acidity goes so far when you're doing that food and wine pairing. It That's does. really kind of a, a key thing. It's a chef trick. Uh, well, yeah. it's a sommelier trick, too. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to check back later. We're going to talk Absolutely. about puff pastry. We're going to fill those puff pastries. We'll we're going to roll out the puff pastry, and we'll assemble the thing. Fantastic. Can't wait. Thanks, Chef. Wow, I cannot believe this braised lamb Wellington pairing. We are in heaven here at Alpha Omega, and as I look at these two, delicious red wines from our November Wine Club allocation. Uh, looking back on the year, I mean, we've just spoiled our following guys with single AVA wines that we uh, released this year for the first time. Library Cabernet Sauvignons, 14 and 15 vintages throughout the year. And these are two delicious wines from the 2019 vintage. We have our Right Bank 2019 blend here, Bob. And then Matt, our single AVA Cabernet Sauvignon from our home appellation the Rutherford Cabernet Sauvignon 2019. Uh, and talk about great wines for the holidays. I think November is a perfect time to release these. Bob, you know, Alpha Omega 
is known for, I would say, the left bank focus blends, the proprietary red blend, the left bank blend that we released this year. Yeah. This right bank, though, is kind of a unique take uh, on an old Bordeaux style of winemaking. You know, it is, and, and the key word I think you said was blend. When we're talking about blends, we're really looking at the sum of the parts, and when you've got great parts, you're usually gonna have a great blend, and I think that's what we've got here. For those of you not familiar with right bank, right bank is talking about a region of Bordeaux, what let's call the right bank. It's the northern part of it. If you've heard of a Centimillion or a Pomerol, for example, those are probably the two of the most famous regions within the right bank of Bordeaux. When we talk about the left bank, we're talking about the area that's actually south of the, the Gironde. When you hear Poyac or Saint-Julien or Margot, that's left bank. The difference between the two is that the right bank features more Merlot. It has soils, it has a climate that's a little bit more conducive to that. So these wines that you taste from Santa Emilia or Pomerol, and of course in our right bank, are gonna feature Merlot. And I think that's really the star of the show today. And yet, Merlot's had a little bit of a, a, a different history, you might say, here in, in California. When we look at the 1970s, when you look at some of the wines that Rick Foreman made at, at Sterling and then at, at, at Newton, as a matter of fact, and then the Duckhorn Three Palms Vineyard, the 70s were really kind of Merlot's coming out. And then we kind of lost our way a little bit, but I think it's coming back now, don't you, Matt? I do, I do. I think when uh, Merlot got very popular, as we were talking earlier, Bob, it got planted in a lot of different places, and some of those places weren't the best place for Merlot. But I think with the sideways effect and with things coming full circle, we're back in a spot where a lot of that Merlot, the weaker Merlot, has been pulled back out, replanted with something else, and now we're left with kind of Merlot in the stronger spots again. So I think we can, we're, we're more confident and more excited to work with Merlot now um, because it's in those great spots that where the, the vineyard block matches the grape and you get a better expression of the grape. So I think it's back in the wheelhouse. Well, I think the other thing a lot of people think is that Merlot means softer wine, can't age, and that's just the opposite. Yeah. If you ever tasted one of these great wines, Merlot-based wines, they can age as long as the Cabernet. So really, in this case, we're not really compromising that. We have maybe a little bit more red fruit here, I've always mm -hmm. talked about. Maybe the tannins aren't quite as strong. Maybe the body isn't quite as full. But this has every, every kind of capability to age. And I know that you purposely kind of constructed that wine, didn't you? We sure did. You know, Paris and I really spent a lot of time focusing on this, the left bank and the right bank. And we, you know, I think we realized that uh, it's a great homage to these great gr uh, grape growing regions um, and great histories of winemaking. And the diversity of the varieties is, is, has always been um, a nice tribute to those areas. But I, what I think we were very focused on with the 19s is finding the lots, finding the vineyards, finding the barrels that showed a lot of restraint in kind of that French theme where the earth and the herbs and the fruit are all in a nice balance and are kind of seamless. Whereas a lot of California uh, wines, especially Bordeaux blends, they're kind of focused on the fruit with herbs and earth being a, a kind of a, a far secondary role in the flavor and aroma profile. But when we were looking for components for this blend, we were really looking for that balance and complexity. And that's the kind of blend we wanted to make, a true homage to, to France and to Bordeaux where the fruit wasn't so showy, where it was all about complexity and much more about subtle characters in the wine. And I really think we nailed it. And I cannot wait for our following to get these wines and to see what we did because I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that it's, it's AO in the fact that there's a lot of character, um, there's a lot of structure, um, it's a big wine, an ageable wine. But the balance, I think, is something unique, and I think it's a true homage to France. I'm really proud of it. Well, when you say France, too, and when we talk about, you might hear these terms old world or new world, and I think sometimes it's a little confusing. The old world, we think of Europe, we think of history, we think of tradition, we think of wines that perhaps are a little bit more restrained because the weather's that way, maybe the winemaking's a little bit more conservative. We think about the new world, we think about North America and South America and Australia and New Zealand. These are regions that are typically warmer regions and perhaps a little bit more enthusiastic winemaking. Yeah. So the style <laughs> tends to be a little bit riper. But what I love is the fact that you have a, a chance, even within the Alpha Omega portfolio, you can taste that new world style, you can taste that old world style. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of fun because then you get to figure out what style you really like. Yeah, and I love um, your, your points about Merlot and Bob, about Merlot being a great wine um, to pick when it's not necessarily in its full ripe California style because Merlot, as opposed to Cabernet, it doesn't hold on to a real mean green streak in the flavor profile. So when you pick Merlot a little earlier, you get the earth and the herbs and the structure and the subtlety without getting that piercing green note through the middle. So 
I think we were able to use Merlot in this case to bring some of that restraint, to bring some structure and some complexity without overwhelming with anything green. I think there are some really nice dried herb notes here and earth, but I think it's all in a beautiful balance with the fruit. You just, you just hit the nail on the head there for me. The, the earthiness and the herbaceousness mm -hmm. isn't overpowered by a green component. Mm -hmm. You still get fruit, strawberry, a little bit of cranberry in for this sure. wine. Yep. Uh, and you know, Matt, I look at uh, the composition of this blend. Yes, we have about uh, just over 50% Merlot, mm -hmm. but we cannot forget the Cabernet Franc that we put in this wine. Uh, and you can taste that herbaceousness and that earthiness, maybe a little bit of spice from Cabernet Franc. 100%, absolutely. And as you mentioned, you know, a, a good amount of Merlot, uh, supported by Cab Franc, a little bit of Cab in there as well. But when I look at where we sourced the fruit from, where the vineyards came from that went into this blend, you know, about 80% of this blend is, is encompassed by the cooler areas that we source from. I look at uh, Spring Mountain, Coombsville and Oak Knoll being the, being the, the yeah. biggest three percentages, making up almost 80% of the blend. So we really did go after kind of a cooler climate exposure um, across the board here and uh, to really make a stylistic wine. And on top of that, we, we got to mention the term diversity, Bob, because we've got 12 <laughs> different sub appellations in Napa Valley represented in this one wine. And if that is an Alpha Omega style, uh, I don't know what it is. Diversity. Well, we got, we got 12 different appellations and we got five different varieties. You know, got to do the sports analogy here. Matt's using the whole bench. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we got everybody playing their role here. And I think that's what I like about it is each one of these regions, or each one of these grapes definitely has a role in this wine. And it's not easy to put those together. And it's just like in a baseball game, when are you going to insert that guy, that reliever? It's kind of how much you're going to put into this particular grape or that's where it. from. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And really, you know, Alpha Omega with the, the diversity of, of vineyards we source from, the diversity of appellations that we're in, it really allows us to make a wine like this. And uh, not being handcuffed by just sourcing from an estate or just a few vineyards really allows us to, to offer so many different expressions of what we do to, to our customers. And uh, I, that's what I think makes this wine very exciting. This is, this is a perfect holiday wine, Bob. Rye Bank Blend 2019 from Alpha Omega. Uh, we're really sort of geeking out and diving into the beauty that is the 2019 vintage as these wines start to get released. Our single vineyard wines, our flagship era, coming on release date here now, yeah, basically. Right now. <laughs> um, and uh, I, we, we, we geeked out about the 18 vintage here at Alpha Omega, and now we're rolling over into the 19s, and, and all is well, yeah. uh, if not excellent, uh, for the 19 vintage. Uh, the, the right bank blend, Bob. Well, and again, I think the 19 vintage, just to finish that thought too, though, Barrett, is that these 19s, two great vintages, 18 and 19, but more than anything, aeration, decanting. Mm -hmm. These wines are so much better, and we've, we've found that out uh, so many times, is that, you know, give these wines an, an hour in a decanter, a large base decanter. Open your bottle, even if you don't have a decanter, a couple hours ahead of time, you'll see that, because I think the 19s are maybe not quite as showy as the 18s. They need a little bit of that coaxing, yeah. and yet when you get them open up, they are lovely. Yeah, totally agree, Bob. They're, uh, they're filled with a little bit more, um, a little more tension than the 18s, a little more firmness, and they but I think that the aromatic complexity is there, but I think you're right, you know, whether a little bit of patience in the cellar or proper decanting is really gonna bring that all up. Yeah, I'm gonna crack this for Thanksgiving for sure. <laughs> this is a holiday wine, this yeah. Ripe Bank 2019. Incredible blend, Matt, congrats to you and your team uh, on constructing an amazing wine. We do have another wine we need to dive into before we check back in with Chef Jesse McCory and that braised lamb Wellington, which I can't stop thinking about. Yes. Uh, very, very excited for, for this wine, Bob. This was the uh, original single AVA release that Alpha Omega produced from last year, right? The 2018 Rutherford single AVA Cabernet Sauvignon. Brand new line of wines here for Alpha Omega, and this is the second vintage of it. Guys, we, we're in Rutherford. It's our home appellation. As we look at the Maya Camus here uh, and, and dive into this wine, uh, it really doesn't get much better uh, than Rutherford fruit, does it? No, and I think this is kind of the flip side of the previous wine. Actually, now we're focusing on one region. We're focusing primarily on one variety. This is over 95% Cabernet Sauvignon. So now it's about individual vineyards. It's about the, the terroir, really the personality of this one place, Rutherford. You know, there's a reason why people came to Rutherford first. There's a reason why Gustav Niebaum put his estate here. This is really, this is why uh, Andre Telechev said the best Cabernet Sauvignons are going to come from Rutherford. Uh, this is not rocket science. On the other hand, it is something that we're extremely proud of, and we have some incredible vineyard sources we're working with to create this wine. We sure do. You know, Rutherford, as you mentioned, Barrett being our home appellation here where the winery is, 
we're very, very <coughs> partial. Um, it, it's, a, it's an expression of Cabernet that is really close to our heart. And to be able to make an AVA um, Cabernet from our home vineyards and our home site uh, and to be able to express that Rutherfordy nature of Cabernet with the classic aromas, but that beautiful texture, that Rutherford dust that we talk so much about um, was another blending. It, it's a, a little bit of a blending challenge as well because now we're going through lots that we feel expresses Rutherford in the best way. That purity of red fruit, you know, that, that texture that's soft but, um, but firm still. And uh, as you mentioned, Bob, a really nice contrast to the right bank blend, a little bit riper, a little bit richer, pure Cabernet. So I think for our, uh, our club members that get this shipment, you know, we don't always recommend that you open them side by side, but this would be a fun one to really open right. side by yeah. side because they are so well made, so um, great fruit sourcing, obviously, but really nicely different. 100% Rutherford fruit in this single AVA Cabernet Sauvignon, guys. And uh, Matt, to your point, just an explosion of aromas, explosion of flavors on the palate, that Rutherford dust, that earthiness that we love in Rutherford, Bob. Uh, I mean, this is just a stellar expression of, of Rutherford Cabernet. It is, and I think immediately when you smell these wines, you smell that dark fruit in the Cabernet versus more perhaps more that red fruit in the, in the right bank blend. I love it because, again, texture-wise, too, you'll see that there's a, there's a breadth, a, a body, a fuller body, perhaps, to that, to that uh, Rutherford Cabernet. But on the other hand, food-wise, we were trying to find something that's going to work with both, and I think that's the fun thing that you'll see here is that, you know, this, this last year we found so many fun recipes that have gone with, with all the dishes and all the wines that we've had. This, to me, is, I think, a, a really fun thing, not only because the wines are different, but you'll see how they interact with the food different. Cannot wait to taste that. And Matt, I mean, uh, our classic uh, barrel fermentation process here in the cellar, uh, you know, even though this is a big young wine, as you guys know, I don't have a problem with drinking this right now. Uh, <laughs> they can it for an hour yep. at, per Bob's suggestion, but uh, I mean, you, you still have a nice soft tannin profile even at this age. Absolutely, and, and I love to talk about what that barrel fermentation does for us here. Just coming off of harvest, where this year we actually filled over 600 barrels for barrel fermentation this year. Wow. Um, it just wow. becomes, it seems to become a bigger and bigger part of our, of, of, of what we do here, a part of our program here at AO. And what I love to always say is, you know, this barrel fermentation, it, it gives us more complex aromas and it softens the tannins and it fills in the mouthfeel um, to, a, to a degree that allows the wine to be approachable just a little bit a little bit earlier and it allows the wine to be uh, experienced in a better way in its youth but once again these wines age incredibly well so all that labor all that work allows us to achieve the goal that that's the you know the um, the unachievable goal in great winemaking and that's for wine to be great now and later and that lets us do that power and finesse power and finesse uh, this 2019 Rutherford single AVA Cabernet Sauvignon uh, Bob great point kind of yin and yang uh, wines in the November Wine Club release. The right bank, kind of softer, a little earthier, spicier, power and finesse, and more concentration with the Rutherford single AVA cab. Yeah, and when you look at Rutherford, it's an interesting AVA because we really have something that's perhaps the west side and kind of the east side, and we're, we're a little bit more towards the, the west side over here. But the east side, even within Rutherford, we have differences, we have complexities. So as much as I talk about complexities of Napa Valley, there's complexities even here in Rutherford. And I think that's in, we have some, when we talk about quality grapes, there's even some Thomas Vineyard in here. There's, there's some great sources in here. Thomas a little bit more on the west side, but even having some, some perhaps fruit on the, on the east side, to me it's that, it's that blending. Once again, whether you're in just one place or you're doing the whole valley, that's really where the secret comes. And I'm, I'm really excited to see this wine in terms of what it'll do aging-wise too. Both of them are gonna age great. There's Thomas Vineyard in here? There Woo! it is. Woo! <laughs> hey, there you go, Alpha Omega Wine Club members. You're welcome. One of our favorite vineyards, the Thomas Vineyard. Yeah. We're staring right at it here in the Rutherford Hills. Yeah. Uh, this wine is delicious. I can't stop drinking it. Before we kind of close out uh, with our group, we need to check back in with, yeah. with Chef here, Bob, mm -hmm. because uh, this braised lamb Wellington uh, is on my mind, and I can't wait to try it. <laughs> okay. Hey, Bob. Hey, Jess. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about puff pastry first. Puff pastry, All yes. Right. What's the secret with puff pastry? Well, the, se well, the secret is the, uh, the fact that it's a savory, buttery, delicious pastry, and it puffs up just perfectly when encased around something a filling like this. Um, 
Uh, any particular brands or anything I should look for in terms of puff pastry when I'm buying it? You can go, there's so many different brands. Pepperidge Farms is actually a good brand, but what I try to find is a puff pastry that has actual butter in it as opposed to just soybean oil. Um, okay. If you can't find one without butter, it'll be fine. Just the, the richness that the um, puff pastry with actual butter in it has and the, and the puff that it gives is just a little bit better in the color that it gets. Okay. Now, do I need to chill it ahead of time, or what do I handle this before I'm really going to start working with it? Well, quite often, your puff pastry will, be, will come, you'll purchase it frozen, so you'll want to pull it out and put it in the fridge the day before, and then let it sit out for about 20 minutes to defrost um, and to come to a kind of uh, just below room temperature, and then that'll give you, that'll make it easier for you to roll it out slightly, because okay. in this recipe, you want to just ever so lightly roll it out just a little bit. Okay. All right, so we're going to start filling one of these now, right? Yes. You're going to show us how you do this? Right, so okay. I've already kind of pre-rolled this one a little bit um, okay. for time's sake. Switch places with you here. Um, and I've cut these into squares and set them on um, some parchment paper. So I've already cut them into a, a nice square, okay? And I've rolled these out. They would prove quite difficult to roll these out in the sun today, but these are already rolled out. As you can see, they're, a, they're a, about an eighth of an inch thick, maybe a little bit thicker. Okay, so it's about that size. It's about a six by six square. And what I do to cut those out, you'll have usually a square about this big, and I will use a, a pizza cutter or a knife just to cut those out. And if you're worried about edges, you can always use a ruler or a rolling pin like this to cut them out. And then when you do roll it, I usually start in the middle, roll upwards first, and then downwards secondly. If you start here, you'll kind of overwork the dough. So, whoops. So, start in the middle, roll up, and then down. I find that works best. Okay, so you have your puff pastry square. First step, our mushroom duxelle, which are roasted ground mushrooms with shallot and parsley and thyme. Put a little pile in the center, a couple tablespoons worth, lightly press down, and we'll take some of our garlic spinach. A few tablespoons. Okay, quite easy. This is our beautiful braised and chopped lamb. We added a little bit of the sauce when we took it out of the oven to that lamb to kind of moisten it and make it pliable. Okay, see how easy this is? Anyone can do it. So now we have our nice little pile. Now, egg wash. Egg wash is just eggs and water, usually equal parts. Whip it until it's kind of a runny consistency. You don't need a lot, so I kind of dip my brush at the ed edge of the uh, bowl, brush the edges of the puff pastry, and we're going to wrap it now. Fold over this way, fold the other corner in, fold it over, like this. The eggs kind of seal it. take that puff pastry or the parchment square that I had I'll kind of shape it okay voila now if you want to get fancy I'll show you really quickly you can take a some of your leftover puff pastry and you can literally cut strips and these strips you can shape so you can drape them over the Wellington and you can literally make a bow if you'd like. Just wrapping it over. Like this. It's a little warm out here, but you get the idea. And then they'll wind up looking like this after you bake them. Gently brush them with um, the egg remaining egg wash. Let them chill in the uh, refrigerator for about 25 minutes. 
just to kind of set and then take them out, bake them at 375 to 425. Uh, 375 if you're using convection, 425 if you don't have a convection oven. Um, the time varies based on your oven, but I would say uh, 20 to 30 minutes. And that's it. Chef, this is really just a great demonstration, first of all, and yet I know the rest of us are very, very hungry now in terms of you've, <laughs> you've succeeded in that. But the, the temperature, too, you said was kind of key, too, in terms of checking it after about 20 minutes, right? Yes. Uh, have a probe, uh, a thermometer, basic a digital or old school yeah. Just yeah. thermometer. Uh, stick it in the side of the uh, Wellington into the middle and get it to about 155. I find that that works well, and it'll, and it'll continue to heat. Uh, up about 10 to 15 degrees afterwards. Beautiful. And then you'll wind up with one of these beautiful Wellingtons. They look great on your holiday table. And when your guests cut into them, there's just these beautiful layers. Wow. That is just gorgeous. See how gorgeous that is. Want From that. afar, it seems intimidating, but it's so easy and you'll impress your guests to no end. So if you're looking for alternatives for Thanksgiving or for Christmas, the whole holidays, and with these wines, this is your choice right here. What a great Absolutely. selection. Thanks again, Chef. My pleasure. Wow. Wow, thank you so much, Chef Jesse McCory. Thank you, uh, Barrett. That dish looks absolutely incredible. And, and if you've been to any events here on site at Alpha Mega over the past few years, uh, you've enjoyed some great food from Chef Jesse McCory, and it's just an honor to have you back. Uh, and I cannot wait to test out this recipe. This will be posted on our website, aowinery.com. Bob, along with a lot of other fun recipes and demonstrations that we've done over the last couple years here at Alpha Omega, I mean, use that as a resource uh, for what you're going to be putting, putting together this holiday season. Well, you're right, and you've got this now library of, of re recipes, like you said, and you can, you can really, these recipes aren't just for those wines. You can take other recipes maybe you haven't had a chance to use during the year, and really apply them. So you've really got a, a fun repertoire now to pick from. But I really think this one, particularly as it starts to get a little bit colder outside and having that, that Lamb Wellington, to me, it's just a perfect match of seasonality and wine and the time of year. Agreed, and I think that both of these wines would match very well with that dish and very well at the Thanksgiving table. It's just about what kind of flavor profile you're looking for. There we go. The holiday season is upon us, my friends. Alpha Mega Wine Club members and, and some of our loyal following out there, we hope you've enjoyed uh, this discussion on our latest wine club release, our last wine club for uh, the 2021 year. And uh, we're pretty confident that you're going to love these wines for the holidays and for many years to come. Again, the, these, are, these are club exclusive wines. There's not a lot of these floating around. These are some of our smaller production wines, Matt. Uh, so if, if you like these and you taste some of these over the holidays, make sure you stock up. They're not going to last long. Also, if you're not in our wine club, and you've, you've stumbled upon this video, we would love to have you in our club. Go up to the top part of our website, aowinery.com, click on the wine club section and sign up. We've got a lot of great wines that we're gonna be re releasing for the 2021 year. And I mean, it's the holiday season. If, if you're not in our club, but wanna gift somebody a nice holiday gift, I mean, give them the gift of our wine club from Alpha Omega for the year. Uh, what a great idea. That is a great Christmas present. Oh, I, I like that idea. <laughs> do I love anybody that much to do that? <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but, you know, again, such a great uh, pleasure to have you all uh, joining us here and watching this video. Um, and we look forward to some uh, more videos for next year and some other new releases. Matt, uh, your 20, the 2021 harvest is, is kind of behind you-ish. Wines are all in the cellar. Fruit and, is in the house. <sighs> and we're happy with 2021. 2021. Folks, incredible vintage. We're still kind of just uh, floating, honestly. Uh, we're reveling in the quality. You know, um, people have been talking about the yields are down a little bit. Dry winter, cool growing year with some heat, um, punctuated in, in little areas. Folks, um, the quality, the concentration, the expressiveness across the board is amazing. Cannot wait to get those wines into bottles so I can share them with you as well. Love it. We appreciate your support out there, Alpha Mega Club members and our loyal following. And we look forward to sharing some delicious wines with you all in the future. I'm Barrett, your virtual ambassador. Winemaker Matt Brain, thank you so much for Cheers. joining us. Master sommelier Bob Bath Thanks, and special guest chef Jesse McCory. Cheers, Jesse, guys. Really Cheers, appreciate Jesse. It. Cheers to you all. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.